Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sleepcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? You know, it seems like it seems like after a good good old beatdown of a Big Ten team, more so Wisconsin, should feel pretty good about that, right, yeah. Jared? Yeah. Uh, we're going one hundred percent positive today. No, it's not true. We have to find we have to find efficiencies. That's we're not doing our jobs if we so if, so if you're if you're thinking about being like Jared, I listened to today's episode. Uh, we you know we won forty five to seven, and that's I think that's the actual score because they were all backups in the third quarter or in the fourth quarter. I don't even count that. At the end of three, forty five to seven. What else could, well, you know, we're not doing our jobs. So if you're like, hey, Jared, you're being a little nitpicky. Yeah, we are. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to be a little bit nitpicky. It was funny. What, what was it? There was, was it Herb Street? No, it wasn't Herb Street. It was somebody that was saying, no, it was Herb Street. He was like, I never, I never seen like Wisconsin look this bad or this beat up. And it's like, well, that's, that, that, that was what the score was, uh, the last time in regular season, Ohio State played Wisconsin. Yeah, or the time before that time. Or maybe it was the time, two times before that. I don't remember. Remember, I remember the championship game. Of course, that, <laughs> yeah. that wasn't broadcast on ESPN or ABC, so Herbie doesn't know about it. But there was a little th- something called the uh, 2014 Big Ten championship game which is the first actual Big Ten championship game. Did you know that, Kyle? Yes, it was. That, that was Because I, I, I don't count the first one. <laughs> uh, right. Ohio State that fans is. have collectively moved that, removed that season from their brains. And Ohio State wasn't eligible for it, so really was it a Big Ten championship game? I don't think so. All right, we're beating around the bush here, though, Jared. Th- this game, though, this was... I knew we all knew going into this game, Ohio state was just the far superior team here, but man, I 31 points. I mean, yes, Jared, you you mentioned that going into the, going into the fourth quarters, 45 to seven. So it was a doing math real quick, a 38, 38 uh, point lead going into the fourth quarter. I, I really didn't expect that much of a beat down that Ohio state did here. And it was all phases and, and with a lot of the starters out too, especially on the defensive side, more so on the corners. Very, very pleased with what I saw on the defensive side. Yeah. uh, The defense played exceptionally well. Um, Again, like there was only one real touchdown given up. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm throwing away the fourth quarter. I don't count it. Uh, Jair Brown was scrapping out there. Um, Buckeye Matt says it was pretty cool listening to Herbie call play by play with his son on the field. Yeah, that was cool. Um, and then uh, pointing out and then uh, Gangland's out here pointing out that maybe Kyle, that's ESPN's last game in the shoe. Ooh, ooh, maybe, maybe. Very well could be. Yeah, Holly, Holly, wrote, yeah, Holly thought so. Yeah. I only remember her saying that it could be her last in the shoe. I think she was just saying she was enjoying it just in case it was the last in the shoe. If I because I think I saw that tweet, if I remember correctly, she said savoring every moment. Yeah. But I think, again, that was that was her saying that it because it, it could be their last in the shoe. I just don't know if we actually know, know that yet. Um. All right. Yeah. Uh, no, Kyle, technically the score will go down um, as 21 to 52. Whatever. So still a 30, still a 31 point victory over a Wisconsin team. And that's still tremendous. Like how, how often does, how often does Wisconsin lose by really more than two scores? It doesn't happen too often. Uh, yeah, uh, they did a, they did a, stat uh one of the like when the bear comes on and asks for a stat o- only two teams have had fewer points per game against them than wisconsin and man imagine what that would be uh if they didn't have to play ohio state every once in a while 
<laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah, it's it's very, very as Kyle said, they historically have a very good defense. And the uh, you can we can talk about of course they they had some injuries in the secondary, as did Ohio State. Uh Wisconsin did have some injuries in the secondary. That obviously was not helpful, but Ohio State was also like pretty run dominant in this game. Um, Henderson, 121 yards. Williams had 101 yards. Williams doing that on just 11 carries, by the way. Um, uh, even Dallin Hayden got 31 yards. Uh, so, yeah. No, no, and, yeah and so, all of that was that last drive. <laughs> Just to milk yeah. that pock. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. We're, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're not counting the fourth quarter. <laughs> I forgot. But yeah, that's yeah. It, very, very balanced offense here. 258 rushing, 281 in the air. That is just, just well, chef kiss. Just, just a very, very balanced attack there by Ohio State. Yeah, and, and, they, uh, and they and they did they did it with. Uh, the first four, they scoring on the first four drives. Uh, Chop got a touchdown and then Stover, Stover, back-to-back touchdowns. And then and then Chop got a, another touchdown. And I just, you can't, you can't be, you can't be more efficient than that. Yeah, uh, they had, uh, let's see, at about... I mean, at about in the first quarter, let's just say in the first quarter, in the first quarter, I believe it to this point, Ohio State had 21 points. I, do. um, I don't believe they had yet faced a third down at that point. Oh, I'm putting this in the chat here, Jared. In at the end of the first quarter, they were one for one in third downs. OK, Uh. I know, I know for a fact because I tweeted it. When at the point they scored the third touchdown, uh, but I think it was after twenty-one. Oh, yeah, at the <clears throat> but um, at the time that they scored the the third touchdown, they had yet to face a third down. They were playing yes. by Canada rules. That's a funny joke if you know anything about Canadian football. Um, the I I'm sorry. I I think that's funny. If you don't think that's funny, that's your problem. But yeah, complete dominance um, offensively and defensively uh, through the first quarter. Just yeah. utter uh, dom. Here, I'm gonna pull the. I'm gonna pull this up real quick. I know it's gonna mess up the chat, but uh, no, I can just do it this way. This is fine. Through the and first quarter, gonna... Stroud had one incomplete pass, two touchdowns, a completion of percentage of 90%. Um, Graham Mertz, on the other hand, was one for three for nine yards and an interception. Um, to that, to the end of the first quarter, Mertz had thrown just as many passes to his own guys as he had to Ohio State. Yes. Yes. And Henderson and already State, had 46 and yards had more had more yards after catch on defense than than Wisconsin <laughs> did. <laughs> That's funny. Technically, he didn't uh, throw an interception. All the balls were caught. No, there was one miss, but either way. Oh, incompletion. Uh, he didn't throw uh, an incompletion. Uh, but no, no, he did. He did. He did also have a an incompletion. He was one for yeah. three. OK. OK, yeah, so uh, let's say it like this. How about this gangland? Let's say he had thrown to the end of the first quarter. He had thrown an equal number of balls to his own guys, to the dirt and to Ohio State. That's a stat. That's a stat. Um, they were their their best running back was uh, four attempts for 19 yards through the end of the first quarter, and uh, the the one wide receiver with a was with a catch was a nine yard completion to Bell. Marvin Harrison Jr. must have been counting his catches and steps on his Apple Watch. <laughs> they made such a big deal about that. I've seen that happen so many times. And what are you supposed to do? Not get your steps? What are you going to do? Not you're going to put forth all that effort? 
and not count it towards your steps? I think not. Gotta get right. the credit. Uh, does it we, yeah, we, does we, it count we, we, if the Apple Watch doesn't record it? Does it count? I don't think so. We've been talking a lot about the offense, a little bit about the defense, but just that was one thing I think go, coming into this game, especially like 30 minutes before the game started, we're like, oh, hey, hey guys, uh, Burke's not playing. And then we're like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> we got, we got a, we got a red shirt freshman and then a true freshman starting in your, in your quarterback positions here. And we're like, all right, well, let's see how the, let's see how these young bloods are doing. And fantastic. They did fantastic here. Yep. And uh, McC McAllister had himself a, a great game too. He had, he had that uh, lone interception for yeah. the silver bullets made a great uh, uh, pass breakup later on in the, in the game too. Yeah. Oh no. I was thinking of something else. Never mind. I was thinking of the, uh, but I don't, I don't think that was McAllister who, who, uh, Made the tackle on the play that ended up getting their tight end uh pretty serious in injury, was it? I don't remember. Um yeah. uh, no, that was McAllister. Oh, it was? Yeah, it was. Okay, there you go. He said he heard a snap. I don't want to hear that. Uh don't but yeah, as Kyle no. points out, uh wide receiver or rather the cornerbacks had a good game. There's nothing in the Wisconsin receiving stats that you're worried about. They held their best wide receiver to four catches for 59 or excuse me, 55 yards. Um, their running back had three catches for two yards, excuse me, for six yards, a two average, two yard average. And nobody else on the team, nobody else on the team had multiple receptions. No one on the yeah. That, Kyle, is that the second week in a row? Well, of course, I think with uh, I think last week they I think was actually only one player with multiple receptions. Uh, so if we don't count the running backs, that that streak is now a you know actually a streak. Yeah. All right. Let's let's get into grading here, Jared. All let's right. Get into the grading. We got a lot of gradings here, so we'll start start from the top here. The coaches. How would you how would you grade the coaches on a A plus to F grading? And and those those in our in our chat, go ahead and uh yep, Buckeye Zach's got it here. Um yeah, go ahead and um post in the chat what do you think for each of the the groups that we're about to talk here. So the coaching coaching staff. Uh I get I go an A plus here. Um again, you you completely dominate the other team. what else do you want? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. A, a plus overall. I, you can't you can't ask for much more other than what what they did. First four drives resulted in, in touchdowns. They didn't get a touchdown until uh, later in the second quarter, which I know Ryan Day wasn't too happy about that pass interference call. But I think more so about the call. It wasn't so much the call itself, but he was trying to support that young quarterback cornerback to say, Hey, I got your back there. Uh, even though I don't agree with the call, but he was trying to stick up for him there. And that, and that pass interference ended up um, leading to that Wisconsin touchdown. Am I thinking of the right one? Am I thinking of the right one here? Um, the was, I, I think that was, I think the only thing that was wrong about that call is that it was called pass interference and it probably should have been it called have been like holding, 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 it's not that yes. big of a difference, though. I don't think. What it, yeah. So it's not. I, they, you know, we can say terrible call. Well, sort of. Yeah, it's like it's like the um, Ohio State Miami national championship game. Was it pass interference? Or was it holding? It didn't matter. Uh, Spikes asks, fifteen yards versus five yards. I don't think it was fifteen yards deep. Uh, so I think it would have been a spot foul. And yeah. I don't. I'm not sure exactly how many yards it was for. Yep. All right. Let's. Let's move on to the offensive coaching. Yes, and both are auto first downs. It offensive was coaching. for 15 yards, Gangland says. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I'll actually just go an A here instead of an A+. Plus. I think we're getting a lot of A pluses in the chat. I'm not going to give them the full A+, plus, o only, only because things kind of fell apart after the first quarter, for being honest. I, I said I was going to be nitpicky, did I not? <laughs> I gave you the warning. Hey guys, I was going to hey be guys. nitpicky. Hey, guys. I'm giving the I'm giving the offensive coaching an A plus. Quit pandering. I agree with you all. I agree with you all. Quit. You're such a panderer. <laughs> I agree. Like he, they only let up on on the gas like in the second half. Like no, they did not. That they let up on the gas after their fourth touchdown, which, by the way, is like one of the most Ohio State privileged things I've ever said in my life. You know, after the fourth touchdown, they kind of pulled off the accelerator. Uh, like CJ Stroud, and I know we're going to talk about the quarterbacks next, so we'll just sort of roll this conversation into that. CJ Stroud through the first quarter had only one incompletion. And he ends the game. Well, let's see. Let me, hold on. Let me let, let me just give you a good example here. Um. So segue to the quarterback uh, rating here. Yeah, segueing to the quarterback rating. Through the first quarter, oh, I don't, I don't still have that tab up, and Kyle. Um, nine for 10. Nine, nine for 10, for thank 10. you. And then he finishes the game 17 for 17. 27. Yep, 62.9% completion. Yeah, but what what is his completion percentage if you take out the first quarter. Uh, not all that good. So that would be nine for. Uh, it would be 17 minus nine. Yeah, and nine for 17. So 53%. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, Bryce Young would have thrown five picks. Listen. I, I don't think that's true, but because you still get maybe three, maybe three. You still you still get Ohio State's wide receivers. <sighs> Sorry, I can't stop yawning. You still get Ohio State's wide receivers in the, in that equation. But yeah, so I'm going to again, because I, I think this is I'm still going to give him an A. It, it, you know, I, I don't I'm not divorcing him from the offensive coaching staff here. And I, cause I don't necessarily think that all of the blame falls on, on Stroud. Yeah. I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving him an a minus. I mean, it's, I, I almost want to just say an a, I mean, five touchdowns for the game, almost, almost 300 yards. And how, how many yards did he, how many of those yards were in the first quarter though? It was 142. Okay. Not as much as I thought it was either way, almost 300 yards for the game, five touchdowns. That's still a ridiculously great game, especially, especially what we're used to in the, like in the two uh, thousands um, going into the 2010s. Like whenever we hit, saw Ohio State get over 300 passing yards, like, oh my gosh, this is great. And now it's almost like a standard now with the past few quarterbacks Ohio State has had. It's like, yeah, they should get 300 yards a game now. That's just the standard with the quarterbacks we've been getting. But Austin, but yeah, by he, the he, way, says uh, he gets graded on a scale, unfortunately. You know what? Yes. And I don't, I disagree with the unfortunately part. We're going to grade a lot based off of expectation. Yeah. And he, he threw, he threw his first interception, not the greatest throw. And he, he made some questionable throws too, which is, yeah, I, actually I feel more confident in me just saying a minus then. So five touchdowns brings, brings that up. It could have easily been a B B plus, but you, you threw five touchdowns in the game. That's, that's a, that's a great game. Welcome Kabuto. Hey, it actually is computer this time. <laughs> All right. Offensive line, Jared. This this is an A plus just yeah. all the way across. I'm all I'm, the way across for for the offensive line. I'm I'm absolutely thrilled and I am absolutely uh again, so we're going off of expectation, right? 
our expectation at the beginning of the year was, can these guys be good enough? Replaced a lot of people, a lot of new people. You know, there's both a lot of new people and even more people at new positions. So it was a concern coming into the year. And on top of that, Wisconsin has a, you know, has a, you know, they had, they had injuries in the secondary coming into this game, granted, but their front seven is tremendous. And Ohio State pushed them over the field. One of the things I said during Know Your Enemy was this is like one of the first times we get to see like Ohio State versus like a Big Ten defense and a Big Ten offense. This is like the first time we get to see what could be a repeat of what we saw against uh, against Michigan at the end of last season. You know what I mean? Like, is that toughness here? Okay, you, you're fast. You're athletic. You're skilled, but are you tough? This is a big part of conversation through camp. And yes, I think they're tough. I, I, and I, they're exceeding my expectations for where I hoped they would be at this point in the year. Yeah, for, for this game here against Wisconsin, they let up zero sex. Oh, and by the way, zero plays that ended up going negative yardage. That is just absurd. You got zero, zero plays that went for negative yards in this game. Ohio State leads the country in least negative plays this season. 100% that's the offensive line. That stat does not exist without an offensive line playing at its top tier. Because I don't care how good your running back is. I don't care how good your quarterback is. I don't care how good your wide receivers are. If you have the least number of negative plays in the country, that is 100% your offensive line. Yeah, here here was um, Jeremiah um, on Twitter. I'll follow him. Really, really good, really good guy to follow on Twitter if you're on uh, Twitter at at S-Y-R-M-O-T-S-A-G. Uh, he says, how good how good is Ohio State offensive line playing? Four games, 271 offensive plays. Only 12 of those plays went negative yards. Only 12. And they've lost only 35 yards. And that yeah. is good enough for best in the country. I, Kyle, okay, so if we're, if we're going to, again, I already sort of brought this up a little bit as far as like our beginning of the year expectations. I said, if the defense can be top 25 in the country, I think I said maybe even 30 or 35. I forget the exact number I gave. And the offensive line can play above average that this, this team will win the national title. Uh, both of those ifs are currently exceeding my expectations. Offensive line's playing better than I imagined they would be at this point in the year. The defense is playing better at this point than I, than I they're playing better yeah, at this point, better than I thought that they would at this point in the year. I I, I lost that sentence, but you know what I'm attempting to say here. <laughs> I just hope they all had fun while playing. Thank you, Kabuto. <laughs> the D is, in fact, rock hard, Zach. <laughs> all right. Running backs. The running backs here. Jared mentioned Zach, Zach says <laughs> Fry deserves coach of the year. I I mean, I uh, honestly, you know what the sad part is? He doesn't even get coach of the year on his own team. Because uh, who who could that go to? Who could that possibly go to except for Knowles? I mean, I mean there, there's, a, there's a guy who keeps recruiting five star. Well, we're not talking about recruit. We're not talking about recruiting titles. We're talking about coaching titles. Look, but, look at the difference. But, but the way, but the, Kyle, but the look at the difference between them. this defense. And let's only count. Let's only count the good opponents. The last two games. Versus the previous two games. And again, just counting the good opponents. Compare this defense, Notre Dame and Wisconsin versus Michigan and Utah. Compare those defenses.
Yeah. Uh, and a guy named Knowles showing that it's possible to flip a D in a single year. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Let, let's get back to the running backs yes. here. Jared A-plus. mentioned at the, at, the, at the top of the show here, running backs, 258 yards, averaging six yards per rush and a pair of touchdowns by chop. Uh, the, this, this, and yet you still give them an A minus. Hmm. I, I'd give them, I give them an A plus too. This is, this was a oh. stout, this was a stout defense. Yes. Yes. We know that they lost, they had some players who weren't playing in that game, but it's still a Wisconsin defense that's always known to be stout. And, a lot, a lot of it had to do with the offensive line and how well they played, creating those openings for the yeah. running backs. But, but yeah, just a plus, a plus for my expectations coming into this game against Wisconsin. Austin saying um, that he'd given a minus. He says Henderson should also be graded on a scale. Um, he's been a good running back. He needs to be better. Um. Austin, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but if whatever expectation Henderson isn't quite reaching, I think Mayan Williams uh, has taken that over. Like in my mind right now, I think Mayan Williams is now running back one dash a and Henderson is one dash B. Um, so I'm kind of getting what from an expectation standpoint. Sure, but we are grading running backs, not mine. I'm grading both of them. But I'm saying, based on based off of my expectations, I'm currently getting out of Mayan what I wanted out of Henderson, and I'm cur- currently getting out of Henderson what I want to be getting on Mayan. Mm. So my expectations are totally met. I just want a 50 to 60 yard breakaway. That's rarely going to happen against Wisconsin. Yes, it would have been nice. It would have been nice having that, but that's that's tough doing against Wisconsin. The book is out on the like the best strategy for defending Ohio State. The book's out. It is let them get five to six yards and keep everything in front of you all the time. Yep. That's that is currently the book on the Ohio State offense. That's what you do. It worked out great for for Michigan. Um, the, not not so much for anyone else to this point, but that that's currently the book on Ohio State. Force yep. them to go long drives, five, six, seven yards at a time. So it's going to be hard to get super long runs based off of that. Because I think yep. teams are also learning don't blitz Stroud because it's not working. So even if you like catch them blitzing on the wrong side, which is a fantastic way of breaking a long run, they're just not even doing that. Teams aren't blitzing Ohio State right now. You're basically well, getting like four defensive linemen and everyone else kind of shelling. Well, that's what they tried to do early on was blitz a little bit. And and what, what happened? Ohio State. Yeah, you know what happened? <laughs> oh, hey, there, there's there's Stover. There's Stover going right down the middle there for for a long completion. Yeah, don't yes. blitz your safeties. Yeah. <laughs> but but Kyle, what did they, they you're right. They did try to blitz like through the first quarter. What did that get for them? And guess what they started doing? Then they, they sort of moved into that shell. And that's yep. when you saw Ohio State slow up a bit. You can't blitz right. Stroud. You can't do it. The, the, that's the other thing that's getting added to the book right now. Stroud's too smart. If you try to blitz Stroud, he's going to find where you're blitzing and hit one of his thousands of, of A-plus wide receivers. So is that is that what you're grading the wide receivers here, Jared? Yes. An A plus. Hey, we've not had JSN basically the entire season to this point. And Ohio State has it. Ohio State doesn't have their four best wide receivers from last year's team. 
if we're counting if we're counting uh, tight ends. So Buka had six catches, 118 yards, pair of touchdowns. Fleming had four and a touchdown, and uh, Harrison Jr. had three for 45 yards. Yeah, I I would say as a whole, you, I don't know how many were. Well, there were a few drops, but Wisconsin was <laughs> they were hitting hard as soon as uh, the receivers and even Stover. But I'll get into Stover in a little bit. But they they were hitting them pretty hard to not knock the ball out of their hands, which I mean, gr- great play by Wisconsin there. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably give well, the wide receivers. I'd probably give the wide receivers a an A here. I, I thought overall, just a well, I'm actually, job. I'm actually going to drop mine to an A minus. Okay. Um, the the average wasn't exceptionally big, and a lot of the receiving success didn't come from the wide receivers, but rather Stover. You you brought up a good point. I was kind of just saying pass catchers in my mind. Um, I think Stover played a huge role here, and you know, he catches two of the touchdowns. He catches half of the touchdowns. Uh, And again, we we need to be grading on a scale right now. I think we need to be grading on a scale. We expect the world from the wide receivers right now. And they were very, very good. I'm not mad at them. I think they did exactly what they were asked to do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it just didn't necessarily show up statistically. So, yeah, I think I'm going to go A minus. Again, I'm being nitpicky. I'm trying to be nitpicky here. All right. Then that leads us to everyone's favorite position here in the chat, Jared. The tight ends. Uh, A plus, 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 plus. Again, we're going off of expectation. This is now two straight tight end games for Ohio State. Kyle, dare we say it? Yodi? Here we go. Here we go. It's that, it's that time of the year here, Jared. No, it is not. Yodi season is in August. This is a very late Yodi season. Uh, the grade doesn't exist for how good they were. No, Matt, I don't think that they were. Uh, I uh, Spike says he thinks it's real. Guys, I think it's Yodi season. Year of the tight end for anyone who uh, so I'm, 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 who might I'm be gonna new. Be, I'm going to be the Debbie Downer here, Jared. Okay. I'm going to be the Debbie Downer here. When, whenever we whenever we say this or ever anybody else says this here. Yeah, you get a you get a game here. Oh, oh, Rutgers just had two touchdowns in this game. Man, is is this the year? And then just flatline or near flatline the the rest of the year. And then here and then here we are it's, against Wisconsin here. And then you have a tight end here, Stover, with a pair of touchdowns as well. Had a had a really good game here. What what did he do last week? He had a touchdown last week, didn't he? He had a couple of nice catches. This is this isn't this isn't one game in September. This is now two games in September, which for Ohio State and tight ends is is twice what we expect. As that is pro- <laughs> approximately a one hundred percent improvement. All right. Well, we'll keep. A, a, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll keep a we'll keep a close eye. On Yodi. on Yodi here. All right. Defensive coaching. Yodi. Here. Defensive coaching. I'll a give them plus. an A. I'll get I'll, I'll give defensive coaching an A here. I thought they overall did really well. There, there was there's a couple of moments where it was definitely some questionable uh, questionable plays, but I yeah, I think overall you did you did a stellar job. You held Wisconsin to seven points going into the fourth quarter. An A, an A. Okay, Kyle, we're we're talking specifically about the coaching, right? Yes. Look, look, look at what Spikes just said. A plus, yeah, especially, especially shorthanded in the secondary. Oh, that's true. That's true. This is an A plus performance. They they. They're, they are currently without their top three corners. They played last night without their top three corners in a position where they were already pretty thin coming into the season as far as just bodies go. Lots of talent. And I don't think anyone's denying any of the talent. 
Uh, but as just far as like numbers go, pretty thin at corner. Um, and again, they only give up seven points when the starters were in. I think maybe technically Wisconsin's first touchdown in the fourth quarter may have been against some of the start, but whatever. I don't care. The game was over at the end of three. It was 45 to seven. A plus I, I this is this is an exceptional job by the defensive coaching staff. All right. Defensive ends here. What would you grade the defensive ends? Because I, I think I think overall, or especially early on, the defensive ends made uh, they made a lot of splash. They, they might not have shown on the stat line here, which is what we always say about the defensive ends this year. Yeah, a lot of pressures. There's a lot of really made um, Mertz just really uncomfortable back there, especially early on. I I think probably a a B plus. I would say B plus for for the defensive ends not, not now, Kyle, we it, did we did have a defensive end there. sack this week we did we did we got one yes yeah it was um uh sawyer sawyer yeah, now was he sawyer. was kind of playing yeah. leo at the time does that still count yeah because he's a defensive end on the roster god damn it um but yeah the uh I, I don't know i thought this was an excellent job by the defensive ends i the fact they them actually bringing the quarterback down is obviously great and you want that, but I'm not, I'm not so caught up on the sack numbers. Um, so I'll, I'll go a minus here. Um, maybe no, you don't know. No. Take the minus off, give a straight up a, cause we, we can't not also grade them based off of the fact that, you know, Wisconsin's running game was completely nothing the entire game. Brandon Allen mm -hmm. through three quarters, like, don't, you know, don't let that 75 yard against the third stringers fool you. So th through three quarters um, had only 67 yards and a four and a half average with a long of nine. Yep. All right. Defensive tackles here. And I, I think I think a lot of that with the grading, the defensive tackles has a lot to do with what you just said about Allen only had 67 yards going through three quarters there. I I think I would give them like an A minus, just a really stellar job of just filling filling those holes, making themselves big, and letting those linebackers and the Leo position really filling in those holes to make a uh, to make the stops. And and, that, and that's one thing that we've seen this year that I'm really, really impressed with Ohio State this year making those tackles in, in open space. You yeah. don't see, you don't see too many missed tackles. I mean, we do occasionally like in the backfield there, but when it comes to pass the line of scrimmage, it, they seem to be doing a really, really good job making those tackles. Yeah. I, I think I had this conversation with Austin in one of the weeks you were out, but we were talking, I think, I think we have a highlight of it too. So you think you can, I think it's called arm tackles, the highlight. So you can find that on our TikTok, Instagram, or our shorts um, playlist on YouTube. Um, where like the reason why you're not seeing missed tackles is because you're not, is because they aren't doing arm tackles. The reason why they're not doing arm tackles is because they're attacking instead of catching. They're making the hit instead of eating the hit. Yeah. Yep. Um, so you, that's the, that's the difference. The, what would you grade the defensive tackles? Um, I'll give them a straight A. Um, I'm going to reserve the plus simply because they didn't feel disruptive the way we've seen them feel disruptive at, at points this year. So we'll just go with an A. Yeah. Yep, I agree. All right. Oh, do, 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 do. we got to see Mike Hall. Got to see Mike Hall back in, which is we which did. is really nice. All right. Uh, linebackers. A plus. Man, yeah. A plus. What? What? Anything less than an A plus, and you're 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 kidding yourself with this one. Y'all, y'all need to start did. putting. No, listen, spikes. I I I, I am still refute the the. <laughs> The nickname Iceberg still feels disrespectful to me. I f just feel like I feel like you're calling him slow and white. And <laughs> <'cause>... <laughs> <laughs> listen, 
listen. <laughs> um, I, I I'm still going with Tommy Pickles Eichenberg. Um, that that's still my go to there. But yeah, Tommy Eichenberg, 14 tackles, seven of them solo, two tackle for loss. Um, another thing I said to Austin the week you weren't here, Kyle, is that I still think Steel Chambers is the best linebacker on the team, and I'm I'm officially I'm flipping that. I think it's Tommy Eichenberg. Road <laughs> Warrior Eichenamel. That that's good too, Zach. <laughs> Man, he seems to be getting better every game this year. Every game. Yeah. It's it's been fun watching watching him uh develop this year. A lot a lot of fun. And it makes me really think about man, some of the past linebackers Ohio State has had. How I mean, how would they how would they look in this defense? I mean, especially like the past couple of years. How many how many linebackers in recent years have we seen go to the pros and be better pros than they were in college? I mean, look at Pete Werner right now. The the difference between college Pete Warner and pro Pete Warner is absurd, and it's kind of embarrassing, if we're being honest. Yeah. All right. Uh, defensive backs. We'll start with the corners. Now uh, you, we, mentioned, we have, we're mentioned grading. That, that we mentioned that they were out with their top three corners here, so there was only two or three uh, scholarship corners uh able to play in this game so you're starting a red shirt freshman and a true freshman in the um in the cornerback position so how would based on expectations from those two how would you how would you grade the corners uh first uh, just buckeye zach says imagine raekwon mcmillan in this defense that's another linebacker better as a pro than he was in college yes uh but yeah to the corners, I think they're, I don't think you can give them anything less than an A plus, um, and and I say that because the expectations we were scared, like quite frankly, it, two two yeah. brand new starters at corner. So you have to, again. So like if we're gonna grade C J Stroud tougher, and if we're gonna grade the wide receivers tougher, well, guess what? We need to grade. We need to give some lenience to the cornerbacks considering there are two brand new starters this game. And by the yeah. way, even if we weren't being lenient, they still crushed it. Yeah. Through three quarters, through three quarters of a game, they held a Mertz nine for 18, 50% passing for 73 yards in an interception. Yeah. Yeah. A plus a plus. And then the, and the safeties, McMillan alone, two. or not, excuse me, I'm still thinking about McMillan, McAllister, McAllister alone. I thought Jerome Baker was pretty good at Ohio State gangland. I, I think Ohio State was still, we're still uh, using their linebackers well at that point. I don't, I don't feel like we had started downhill on the linebackers yet. Yeah. Yeah. Safeties. Yeah. A plus as well. Good. It's same boat as the corners make, making some Great tackles in open space. And uh yeah, same same reason. 73 yards for Mertz through three quarters. Yeah. A plus for the safeties as well. Yeah. Uh I I agree. Uh again, especially with McAllister's play. Yep. All right. Last one is special teams, Jared. Oh, uh, let's see. There was one punt during uh during the times we actually cared about. <laughs> um, you put it right on the five yard line or right inside the five yard line. Um, yep. But one of the, yeah, Spikes points out, yeah, but the opening kickoff was bad. Yes, it was. Um, there were two kickoffs out of bounds, one or two. Um, a, a couple returns where they had way too much running yard, uh, way too much running space. Um, uh, I, I'm, I, I didn't, I, I thought uh, Merco looked good um, and Ruggles looked good, but the return game almost, 
almost coughed up the first possession. How, how, how what, what, if, if Wisconsin scores that, there that was, instead, perfect, what so. does that do to the momentum and the path of this football game? And then I thought the kickoff coverage was uh, both kickoff coverage and the, the out of bounds kick I thought was lacking. Um, so I'm going to go like a B minus here. Okay. Um, yeah, nah, nah. I mean, C. I mean, I mean the, C. the, the muffed, the, the muffed, the muffed kickoff return was on purpose, Jared. It was, it was, it was so that they can get them, um, extra yardage for the offense. Yeah. The NCAA strategy. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll say B plus. I'll say B plus. All right. All right. And uh, we will be giving up Buckeye leaves here, Jared. So offensively and as well as in the chat here, who do you who are you given your Buckeye leaf for on the offense? I think uh, Stover, you know, uh, you got there <laughs> slightly before me. We can't look Buckeye, Matt, we uh, we, we don't allow because someone. <laughs> me was abusing. <laughs> Just like saying the offensive <laughs> yeah. line in the past. But I, I agree. If I, if I, I agree with you, uh, Buckeye, Matt, it, if I could give it to the whole offensive line, I would. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I'll give, I'll give it to Stover too. Yeah. I think it's Stover all the way across. They just, yeah, such a, such a great game that, uh, that Cade Stover had. All right, Kyle, who do you have for the defensive Buckeye Leaf? Gonna give it to uh pickles. I'm gonna give it to Tommy Pickles. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um I you you have the right answer. I just want to say that you have the right answer, but just for the sake of uh not being so samey and spreading things around a bit, um, I'll go ahead and 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 give mine to McAllister, Tanner McAllister. Right. Um gets a crucial interception uh, that again, kind of, you know, sets the stage for another quick score and just, just knocking Wisconsin out of the game entirely. Or in your wild card, just one for either offense, another offense, defense, special teams, or, or whatever. Who's your, who's your wild card? My wild card. I think I'm going to give, um, I don't I think I'm going to give the wild card specifically um, to Marvin Harrison Jr.'s first half shoes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I think we've been a little bit boring with the wild card, so I wanted to I wanted to spice it up. Um, so. Specifically to Marvin Harrison Jr.'s shoes in the first half. That's funny. Well, apparently he's he's been wearing it for the games. It wasn't just this game, but he's he's been wearing that. Oh, uh, the Apple Watch Kyle's talking about. Yes, the watch. Yes, he's, he's his dad's at NFL money. Don't worry about it, guys. Um, but yeah, the, the <laughs> shoes were new last night. And I think maybe uh, s someone from Nike may have called because he wasn't wearing them in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, my wild card. You know, you know, I, yeah, I mean, Marvin Harrison Jr. is, is a good one, but you know, I'm, I'm going to go with a non-player here. I'm going to, I'm going to give, I'm going to give my, my wild card to, uh, to coach Knowles. I just, just want to be, just the, I want to be clear, Kyle. I didn't give mine to Marvin Harrison Jr. I gave it to Marvin shoes. Harrison Excuse Jr.'s shoes, shoes okay. in the first half. I'm giving it to coach Knowles coming up with this great game plan and out with three of your corners and still had this type of game defensively. Yeah. Coach Knowles. Give it to Coach Knowles. The 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 chat opinions are all over the place. Um, yeah. I'm seeing Sawyer. I'm seeing Same Chop, 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 another Chop, Fleming, Fleming uh, Louis Vuitton specifically. <laughs> uh, Marvin Harrison Jr.'s watch. Um, uh, Harry Miller is an interesting one. Kevin Wilson, I think, is a is a good pick. Uh, Sonny Styles, um, 
got got some playing time, got got a 15 yard penalty, uh, which was not great, but we got some playing time. Yeah, Jared, um, we got we have a few questions here. We'll go <laughs> you just these. wrote lots in the notes. <laughs> lots. Ch- <laughs> chop was the only chop was the only one I saw get multiple votes. So make it chop. All right. All right. So we'll we'll put chop. Yeah, and he had almost 10 yards of carry there. So yeah. All right. Uh, let's answer these questions here from our Ask Sloopcast mailbag. Uh, we'll start off with Z Spikes. Uh, Z Spikes says, "Do you think Day?" reined in the play calling midway through the second quarter once it was obvious the game was no longer competitive or did uh Leonard make an adjustment that made Stroud uncomfortable enough to struggle the rest of the game a little bit of both I, yeah i think a little bit of both but i really think more so on this on the the latter half of your question there i think once wisconsin finally figured out how to slow down ohio state it, it was too late at that point. They were already down twenty-eight nothing by the time, by the by the time they figured out how to how to make Stroud uh, think a little bit more before he passed. Yeah, uh, well, they just started following the book, which they weren't following at first. They yeah. came out thinking, "No, nah, you know what? We can blitz them," <laughs> and they yeah. found out they were wrong. Yeah. All right. Question from Buckeye Zach. Can you give us your hot takes, hot takes of what needs what still needs to improve? While also stating if it isn't broken, do not fix it. Uh I think the offense is doing exactly what the offense needs to do. I would say the only thing I would like I I don't know if it's consistency or if it's complacency. Um the Ohio State offense right now feels like it is sometimes impossible to stop. We basically saw all last week against Toledo and through the first quarter of, of this game. Um, and then it, sometimes it looks like they can barely walk on two feet. And I don't, like I said, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's focus or if it's complacency or if it's, I, I don't know what it is. Um, so I think that's something to work on better consistency. Something to work on uh, in my mind is the, is that darn punt return game. <laughs> I would say so one day needs that touchdown. Yes, one day. <laughs> Maybe next week. Maybe next week. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Buckeye Matt has a question. Our latest for us sleep here. cat. Welcome to the sleep cats, Buckeye Matt. Yes, Stroud is the clear winner for the Heisman at the moment, right? I don't see anyone near his level of play this year. I'm not. I'm. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about it, and I hope he's not worried about it. Is my answer to that? Like I, the Heisman doesn't matter. I, I don't care about the Heisman. Does he care about the Heisman? Maybe uh, because, you know, you had. You had a certain you had a certain someone uh, thinking he was uh, funny and making fun of him uh, during the Heisman ceremony last year. Um, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's a motivating factor for. Uh, I don't know. Kyle. You think you think Desmond being a dickhead during the Heisman ceremony to C.J. Stroud um, is is an influence? Is do you think there was any motivation garnered from that? Maybe deep down inside, but it shouldn't really be much, to be honest. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, yeah, ex- exactly. Kabuto said C.J. is better than that. Is he? Yeah. Uh, CJ Stroud is the current uh, Heisman favorite per the screenshot that Kyle dropped in the notes from FanDuel. It's from FanDuel. OK. And it's and it's a significant amount. It's 125 and then Bryce Young at 500 and Caleb at 600. And there's a big drop off to to Hennon Hooker, uh, Benton and then uh, Daniels. Imagine giving Stenson Bennett a Heisman trophy. 
Good God. I don't I don't think he's thrown an interception so far this year. I don't care. Could that's... he lift it? <laughs> could he lift it? <laughs> God damn it, Kabuto. That's funny. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. All right. That's that is all the questions we have for uh, today's episode, Jared. Do you got, got anything else before we call it an episode? Uh, Zach, if you remember, uh, CJ threw his first interception during this past game. Uh, qu- uh, how how bad will powerhouse Rutgers annihilate us next week? Uh, you'll have to tune into the Thursday episode. Yada, yada, yada. Thursday episode plug. Yeah. All right. That's it. Uh, so speaking of, if you don't already know, we release four of these a week. Um, five if you're a sleep cat. Because Kyle and I are stupid, apparently. Kyle, why, why, are we, why are we doing five episodes a week? Oh, no, you tell me. I don't know. Um, <laughs> doing five episodes a week. Ten if you count the shorts. Maybe. We're, we've, we've missed a couple. Um, but five episodes a week. And then actually, I think it would only be nine because we don't do the shorts. Okay, but but for everyone else, normal episodes, four episodes a week. Um, Monday, we go over the Ohio State game that just happened. Tuesday, we go over the week of just just the general national scope of things. Thursday, we do Know Your Enemy, where we preview the upcoming game. And Friday, we do Slip Picks, where we will cover six additional games uh, and make our picks against the spread. So that's our schedule. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, early, f- early odds or early favorites for the Buckeyes and Rutgers game. Where, where would you guess it's at? Unless you already saw it. Uh, you, what, the, the spread? Yes. Um, 38. 39. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay. In all honesty, 100% honesty, Kyle, I almost said 37. So, you know, I missed by one. I was kind of leaning down to 37. See you, gangland. So 69 69 to nothing, nothing. maybe. (laughs) Rutgers, this is funny. Uh, Rutgers is two and two, has a two and two record uh, ATS and regarding over under results heading into their fifth game this season. Ooh. I don't know. Find out, find out Thursday on, on what we, uh, we pick the over or the under for the Ohio State Rutgers game. Or the, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Gregory Shano is about to lose by 50. I mean, it's true, but you don't have to say it like that, Buck Isaac. Oh, Ruffian equals gangland. You're still confused sometimes about the name changes. Yeah. It's yeah. R- Ruffian territory, gangland. Yes. Think about it. All right. Uh, that's it. That's the that's the end of today's episode. Um, if you uh, okay, music. That's what we're doing. Uh, tonight's ending music is brought to you by a uh, a band called uh, Signals Midwest. Signals Midwest. Um, they are um, like a like an alt rock band. I think I think we'll go alt rock. Uh, that's that's a generic enough term. <laughs> doesn't tell you anything and i'm sorry um but yeah the name of the band signals midwest if you're listening to the podcast version of this uh you do nothing the song will start playing here in a moment uh and if you uh watch us on youtube then we can't do music on youtube so you can check the show notes there's a link to the song in the show notes and you can listen to it if if you want to so, Kyle, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Signals Midwest.